Hey guys and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this series we're working on a 2D space shooter that can be played on a mobile device be it Android or iOS. In the previous videos we set up the UI, we worked on the character movement and in the last video we worked on firing a projectile from the spaceship. In this video we will be taking care of the enemies and we want to make them fall from the top at random intervals. With that being said, let's get started. So if you've enjoyed the series so far, please consider subscribing and also turn on your notification bell so that you can get notified when we drop new videos. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to right click on game screen canvas. We're going to go to create empty and we're going to rename this to enemy spawn point. Then we're going to move this all the way down just above our so we're going to place this enemy spawn point just above our screen so somewhere around there we're going to press save okay cool so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to rig up our enemies so if we open our art folder we can just drag and drop our enemies in the scene so i want to just resize this guy to about there i'll do the same with this guy and just change the auto layer to one and I'll do the same for the last guy as well. Okay, cool. So there are some things that each character needs or each enemy needs just to make everything compatible and workable. So the first thing it's going to need is a rigid body 2D. So we can just add that in. Then it's going to need a box glider because when the bullet collides with this enemy, we want an explosion to happen in uh, a later stage at, at this game. And we also want to trigger some scoring systems. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a simple box collider 2D and we're going to check the is trigger box and we're just going to edit the collider just to make it a bit harder for the player so that when it only when the bullet only hits the body that's when an explosion will take place. Okay, so that guy's done. Let's do the same for the other two. Rigid body, box collider, is trigger, edit the collider and let's do the same for the last one as well. Okay, cool. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a script called enemy controller that's going to control the speed of this enemy and some other features as well. So let's do that. Let's go to the first enemy and let's just add it on there. So we can say add component, add new script and we're going to call this enemy controller. We're going to double click to open it up in Visual Studio. Okay, so what we're going to need is a private rigid body so it's a similar thing to what we did with the bullet so let's do that we'll create a private rigid body 2d and we'll call it rb next we're going to need a speed so we'll just say public public float speed and we're going to equal this to one for now then on the start we want to grab a hold of the rigid body so we'll say rigid body is equal to get component and we're going to get the rigid body 2D. We'll open and close that off. Then what we want to do is we want to set the velocity of this enemy and we want to give it some speed. So we'll say rb.velocity is equal to new vector 3 or vector 2 sorry. And we'll give the x position as 0 because we don't want it to move left and right. We just want it to move up and down. Well down. So we'll say negative and we already defined the speed on top so we'll close that off head back into unity and now we see we have our script here we can do the same thing we can just add the same script for the other enemies as well and then we need to make these prefabs so we'll open our prefab folder and we'll just drag and drop each of our, each of them in here once we're done with that, we can delete them from the scene. So now that our enemy is rigged, let's start the spawn process. So uh, let's just fix this uh, typo quickly. So we'll rename this. It should be enemy spawn point. Okay, and we need a script here on the enemy spawn point and we're gonna add component. And this script is going to be called enemy spawn controller we're going to double click to open it up in visual studio okay so with the enemy uh spawn controller what we're going to need is we're going to create a list of enemies and we're going to create a random number and when we get a random number we're going to go through the list of enemies and when it's equal to that random number we're going to get that enemy and then we're going to instantiate that enemy so let's start what we're going to need first is a float for a random number 
then we're going to need a vector 2 because we want to store the position uh, as to where we want to spawn so we're going to say spawn position then we're going to need a spawn rate so how frequently do we want this uh, enemies to spawn and we'll call this spawn rate and for now we'll just set this to 2 lastly we need a next spawn so we'll say private float and I'll show you what I'm talking about just now next spawn then we're gonna equal this to 0, 0.0 and I think we're good to go there the next thing we need is a list to store all of our enemies in so we're gonna say a public list and we get this list is gonna be of type game object and we're gonna call this enemy list then we need a private game object that's going to store our random enemy okay cool so what we're going to do first is we're going to create i'm just going to delete that for now we're going to create our or we're going to get our random enemy first so let's do that i'll say private game object and i'll call this a random enemy and the reason i'm saying game object is because i want to return a game object and i'm not saying void because i want to return something and in the end I can just say return random enemy so what we're gonna do on top is first we need to get a random value so what we're gonna say is var so actually we're gonna change this to a random position and down here we're just going to create a random temp value that we're going to use and we're gonna equal we're gonna set this temp value to random dot range and we're going to pass in a range from 0 to the enemy list.count. So that means from 0 to a number that is equal to the last number in the enemy list. That means if there's 5 items in the list, this number would equal to 5. So our range would be from 0 to 5. So let's close that off. I want to loop through this entire list. And then when this value is equal to a value in uh, the list, I want to return that enemy. So I'm going to say is i is equal to 0, i is less than enemy list dot count, i plus plus. And then in here, I'm going to do a check. I'm going to say if i is equal equal to the random temp value that we just generated, then I want to return the, or well, I'm going to set the random enemy equal to the enemy list and I'm going to pass in a value that is the check that we just did. Okay, thereafter, we're going to return the random enemy. So whatever we find here, we're going to return that. So what we're going to do next is we're going to create a public or private function to sort out our spawn and instantiate our enemy. So we can call this private void spawn enemy. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick check first just to see if the current time is greater than our next spawn point so what we can do is we can say if time dot time is greater than the next spawn and currently it's set to zero we want to say next spawn is equal to time dot time plus the spawn rate the next thing we want to do is we want to set random position that we generated on top we want to set it to a, a range okay we want to get this position every time we instantiate a game object we want to get a position but we want to get a position between two values okay because we want to bound it again to our screen so what we're going to say is random position is equal to random dot range and we're going to use the same values that we used to bar clamp our screen or clamp our spaceship character negative 2.4 f and 2.4 f we we'll close that off so we need a variable to store our position and we did create one on top it's called spawn position so we're going to set the spawn position it's equal to a new vector two we're going to pass in the first value as our random position and the second value to be zero lastly we want to instantiate this game object so we'll say instantiate and we'll just call this function here random en enemy because it already returns a random enemy so we'll just say random enemy then we want to tell it where does it need to spawn so we already have this stored here so we can just say spawn position 
Class knee needs a quaternion identity, which is uh, a rotation. Okay, so we can just say quaternion dot identity for that. And lastly, we can just say this dot transform. Okay, and everything looks good to go. Lastly, we're going to call this method in our update function. So we're going to say private void update. And we're going to call this function here spawn enemy. We'll close that off. We'll head over back to Unity. Just wait for everything to load up. And now you see we have a spawn rate and we have a list of enemies. I'm going to set this list to three. I'm going to open my prefab folder. I'm going to drag my enemies in here. I'm going to save my work and I'm going to hit play and see what happens. Okay, so there was one error that we didn't add a rigid body to the enemy number four. So let's do that. The enemy number three, let's add that one. Oh, it, we do have one there and we do have one here. Okay, that should be fine. Let's run this game again. Yeah, so one of the mistakes that we made quickly just to point out, we should actually uh, set the spawn position to a new vector 2 and the first parameter is a random position. The second one we actually need to set it to transform.position.y instead of 0 and then everything should work fine. So let's run our game again. We'll press play and there you see it. Our enemies fall nicely and it's also randomized. So we get the red enemy, the green enemy and we should get a purple one coming soon. There you go. So that's all for this video. If you did enjoy this video, please consider subscribing. As I said before, we really want to grow this channel. And if you do subscribe, it is greatly appreciated. So in the next video, we'll be taking care of uh, the scoring system and the live decreasing system as well. So let's get started with that.